Hello everyone and you can see today I'm back here again at the whiteboard. I hope wherever you're watching, whether it be in India um, or anywhere else in the world that you're safe and well. Um, so if this is the first time you're watching as a Gray subscriber, my name is Greg. I've been an English teacher for the last 15 years. Um, I'm back here in my homeland, which is New Zealand. I've been here for a couple of years. During that time, I've worked for grade um, for a lot of that time. So I'm very familiar with the IELTS test. And what we're gonna do today um, is we're gonna look at another writing task two essay. So I know writing task two is one of the harder parts of the test for so many of you. We're gonna have a different approach today. What we're doing today for you, the subscribers, um, we have another volunteer who has um, created an essay. That essay has gone into the grade site and the essay has scored a five to 5.5, right? So definitely an essay which needs a lot of work. Um, in previous webinars, what I've done is I've given feedback about the essay. What I'm gonna do here for you um, is I'm actually going to rewrite the essay using the students' ideas to come up with my own essay, right? So not exactly my own essay because I am gonna base my essay on the ideas which are in the volunteered essay. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, don't worry at home if you want to try write everything down because by the end of this webinar, um, we have Tom at the other end of the computer and he's dictating what I'm writing on the board, that will be uploaded to the grade blog as an example essay. Um, hopefully it's gonna score an 8.5 to nine on the grade site. So I know you're watching on the grade site. Um, hopefully we're having no difficulties with the chat forum, so, or the chat function. So if you do have any questions, hopefully you can send them via the grade site and I can see them on my computer over here. Um, also again, as we, as I talked about with the previous writing webinars, if you do have the task, uh, the band descriptors available, that may be helpful. I have them sitting on the table over there. I might grab them from time to time, but otherwise I'm gonna be very busy today writing so that you can see um, how this essay can be re rewritten. Here is the question for today. And it's one again from the grade site. I'll show you it. So I'll give you a chance at home to read the question, right? So we have, this is the statement here and this is the task. Take some time to read this. You might already be familiar with this. So but anyway, I'll give you a chance. Okay, as I mentioned, you may well have already practiced this on the grade site. Um, you might already know the score that you got when you did practice. Um, again, the essay that I'm about to show you, it scored a five to 5.5, right? So I'm now gonna give you a chance to read this volunteer essay. Um, after you finish reading it, I'm gonna go through some of the grades or some of the scores that it got on, some information from the scores that it got on the grade site. We're gonna look at the strengths and the weaknesses according to the feedback from the site. But first, some time to read the essay. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. Um, this will be uploaded, this webinar, or you will be able to watch it perhaps on YouTube. 
Um, so if I am going too fast, just send a message, but I'm timing it by reading it with my eyes twice. So hopefully that's enough time for you at home. Also remember that um, as we as I rewrite it, you'll be able to see these pages again too. Okay, I'll go over to the next page. Okay, and the last page. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you some of the feedback that this essay got on the grade site. So I've used the same terminology from the grade site um, to link them to the band descriptors. Obviously a response is task response. The blue is a positive, so definitely, um, I, I like to think the student has watched a few of the videos and has been practicing paraphrasing. There was some definite evidence of paraphrasing um, in the introduction. Also, hopefully you did as well. Um, the student has identified the task. Clearly they are talking about problems and solutions, but um, within or well, throughout the whole essay, even though the essay is clearly about problems and solutions, it's quite difficult to identify the problems and solutions clearly, right? It kind of jumps around a lot. Um, and there's no clear conclusion, right? So in terms of coherence and cohesion, um, or cohesion as it's known on the site, there are some linking words. Like I remember off the top of my head, well, I haven't written here. Um, I think, um, in my opinion, even though to sum up is probably not the best case of device um, or linking word, um, there are some, there is evidence of trying to link things together. But hopefully you saw this as well. This is a huge one for me with this particular essay. There is no paragraphing. So um, yeah, that to me, that was the first thing I noticed when I saw this essay, there's absolutely no paragraphing. We'll go over and have a look at the vocabulary and grammar. Okay, so for me, the vocabulary was also one of the weaker parts of this essay. Um, yeah, I know global warming is a difficult expression to paraphrase or use a synonym for. But unfortunately, this candidate has used the expression global warming nine times. So the algorithm picks up on that very easily. By algorithm, I mean the system, the grade system picks up on that very easily. Examiners usually will as well. Um, global warming, climate change. I think you could probably use those interchangeably um, or explain global warming in different words, right? So the increase in temperature year by year. Um, but to just repeat global warming nine times, 
um, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. In general, there's a limited range of vocabulary here. A lot of words are repeated again and again, quite often in the same sentence. And as you may have seen, there are some spelling mistakes. On the other hand, um, some definite positives with the grammar. Um, there were some complex sentences in there, um, and there's a range of different sentences as well. Um, but at times, the grammar was not accurate. So again, what's going to happen now, I'm going to take these ideas and rewrite them. And then at the end, fingers crossed, we're going to take my essay and put it into the grade system. Hopefully, it gets an 8.5 to 9. Um, it's kind of my reputation at stake here, right? So we'll go back to the start. So we're going to compare um, the volunteer's essay, and I'm going to start writing up a, a new draft. Okay, just one last chance to, to have a look at the question itself. Now, perhaps if you're on the grade site, I'm not sure if you can see that um, or you can access that, but global warming is one of the biggest threats humans face in the 21st century and sea levels are continuing to rise at alarming rates. Now, I've mentioned this in a previous webinar, but this essay is not about global warming. This essay is about sea levels continuing to rise. That is the main problem, right? Global warming is causing sea levels to rise. So this is another area where the um, candidate has, has um, failed upon, really. Um, sorry to use the word failed. Um, but what I mean is the candidate has not spoken enough about rising sea levels and what problems rising sea levels um, cause. Um, and how they can be solved, right? So that's where I'm going to focus a lot, or all of my essay will be focused upon the problems of rising sea levels and how we can solve those problems, right? So I'm still going to use the candidate's ideas, but obviously problem solution essay. Now, in terms of the paragraphing, To me, this is where the first paragraph, the introduction finishes here, right? So obviously this is the start of the introduction here. So there is the first problem solved um, in terms of this essay with paragraphing, which I think is the biggest problem with this essay. That could easily be corrected if this just began on a new line. But the introduction wasn't too bad, but I'm going to rewrite it, right? So this is how I would paraphrase the question. Um, but again, this introduction is not too bad. Okay, just to keep you engaged, I'm going to stop at times and just explain what's happening. So, I just like to keep my paraphrasing closer to the statement that we're given by the examiner. Right? I don't want to miss any opportunity to show the examiner that I can take his or her words and change them using different grammar or different vocabulary. So this is why I'm rewriting the introduction. But again, the introduction we have from the volunteer is, is one of the stronger parts of their essay. I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> so as I write my introduction, I'm also using my own template, which I've explained 
in a previous webinar. If you want to find that webinar, it was webinar number eight where I talked about templates. So the next thing I do is I say, namely, right? Right, so I'm gonna name the problems, right? So I'm being specific at this point. And the big problem, which um, this volunteer has also talked about flooding, right? So that was well done. So that's one problem that the candidate did talk about, but it's just hard to find when there's no paragraphing, it's hard to read. But I like to name the problem straight away in the introduction. And then what I'm doing Oh, sorry, I think I've made a mistake. I skipped the line, sorry. So, okay, sorry, comma. Sorry about that. So. I'm gonna bring the examiner's words back up again. Okay, so what I have here is, this is my paraphrasing of the statement we're given by the examiner. I skipped a line before, so sorry about that. So one of the most urgent um, is related to biggest threats. Facing mankind, so mankind is humans, is the risk, right? So risk is threat from ever increasing, right? So even with um, sea levels continuing to rise, I've paraphrased that as ever increasing. And here, I'm also including the part about global warming, but complex sentence, right? So which is one of the impacts of global warming. So the next part is where I'm gonna preview my main points and state my position. Remember, problem solution, essay, your position is how you're going to solve the problems. <clears throat> so we can see here with the candidate, um, they're not specific, right? So he or she has just said, this essay will talk about the problems and solutions of global warming, right? And again, that's not actually the topic. The topic is the problem of rising sea levels. So I'm gonna show the examiner that I have, I've identified that. And I'm gonna start with the, same, with the same words. So I'm gonna say this essay. I like the word explore. It's just one which comes to me naturally. Issues is obviously problems. Right, um, now I know the examiner used the word associated. If, I, if you wanted me to use another word, I could say related, um, but I'm just gonna stick with associated because I've already written it now um, with this. So again, there's that example of referencing, right? This is the first statement, right? And here is what I was writing before, namely, Flooding, right? So here is the here I'm identifying the problem, right? So, right, we have to talk about the problems associated with rising sea levels. So I'm telling the examiner, I'm previewing what I think the main problem is, which is flooding, and then I signal my position before arguing that. This can be solved by building seawalls now seawalls is usually one word so I'll put a hyphen to show that it continues on the next line and reducing
right? It's getting quite low for me to write down there. I just wanted to try and get everything from my introduction on basically one shot for you. Hopefully the writing is big enough. Let me know if you need me to write a little bit bigger. But again, I just want to stress that I'm using as many of the ideas in the original volunteers essay as possible. Um, if I were to write this essay from scratch, if I wrote it myself, I would only focus on solutions um, which relate to rising sea levels, right? So I would talk about building seawalls um, and I would probably talk about relocating um, people that live in the vulnerable areas, right? The areas that often flood. But because this candidate has talked about reducing global warming as a solution, I'm gonna stick with that. And I think that's possible here because if we reduce global warming, hopefully that means sea levels are not gonna rise as much or hopefully sea levels will stay the same. So that is actually a solution. So I'm gonna stick with that. We're gonna move on to main body paragraph one. So here comes the eraser or the whiteboard eraser. So again, if you're joining late, don't try to write everything down at home because this example, my essay will be uploaded as an example um, onto the grade blog, All right? So I'm just gonna turn the computer on again. Check to see if there's any questions. Okay, so global warming makes many problems. So not a bad topic sentence, right? So, but again, this should be the start of a new paragraph. Um, when we start a new paragraph, it needs to be on a new line. And just to make it really clear, I would actually leave out, a, I'd leave a line space, right? Just show the examiner that you know how to paragraph, make it really obvious. Just imagine I've, I've missed a line and now I'm starting on main body one, which is talking about the problems. So, not a bad topic sentence, but this is mine. Okay, so what I'm doing in my topic sentence is I'm just linking back to the introduction more, right? So again, I'm identifying um, the problem, which is the rise in the level of the sea. So obviously I'm paraphrasing again, rising sea levels, the increase in the levels of the sea. Always just keep changing the same phrases, right? So always keep changing the phrases so that you're using a range of vocabulary a range of different grammar. Um, and again, with topic sentences, link them back to the introduction. So, okay, I'm gonna signal the first problem. First, right, so very easy cohesive device. Here is my first main point for the first problem. First, Okay, just to review, I signal with a cohesive device, this is the first main idea, the first supporting idea rather. This is the first supporting idea in the main body paragraph. And of course, it's one of the problems, right? So first, many coastal areas, especially those that are low lying, right? That means close to the sea, um, or close to sea level, suffer from frequent floods, right? So I've used the word suffer because it's a strong collocation, right? You suffer from floods. It's some sort of natural disaster, you suffer from it. 
Also, I just want to get in a complex sentence. That's why I've added in a bit more information. Really, it's just so I can have a complex sentence here. And I'm going to give some more detail for this. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm following that same template that I've shown you before, where I have a supporting idea, which is the problem, and then I just give a bit more detail. It could be an example, it could be explanation. In this case, I've just explained more, right? So I've said, um, you know, that low-lying areas often suffer from floods because of rising sea levels. And I've said this is even worse this is what this means. Exacerbated means made worse by storms and higher tides. Right? So I'm just always following that same template, supporting idea in a bit more detail. Um, then I move on with another cohesive device on top of this. Right? right. So this tells the examiner I have another supporting idea, which is an R. Okay, I'll move out of the way so you can see that. Again, signaling to the examiner that um, my next supporting idea is coming. And this next idea is that many areas have been permanently claimed, right? So this means they're gone, right? They've been claimed by the rising ocean, right? So even C, I'm paraphrasing with the word ocean, right? So again, just to review, um, my first point is that the rising sea level especially affects low-lying areas near the, um, near the sea. Um, and then my next supporting idea is Actually, some areas have already gone. Right? They've already been taken by the ocean, right? Um, there is more to this paragraph. There is a couple more lines. So I have to erase this and I'm gonna continue on the next page. Whiteboard page. I'm gonna flip over the page from the volunteer though. Now, to me, that's where that's where the um, volunteers paragraph should have ended. Um, so, just to repeat what I wrote before, um, I finished my second supporting idea. I said, on top of this, many areas have been permanently claimed by the rising ocean. So now I'm going to give an example. Some of you may have heard of this um, particular island group. It's actually islands. It's more than one island in the nation of Tuvalu, so islands of Tuvalu. Right, so the reason I know about Tuvalu is because in, a lot of people from Tuvalu have actually come to live in New Zealand because Tuvalu has been flooded, right? So um, now I'm even going to add a little bit more, right? So and I've just told you what I'm going to write really. So people from um, these islands. All right, so again, I'm referencing, right, these, these islands and others, right, so 
Tuvalu is just one example. There are other places which have been flooded. Um, face. Right, so I've just added even a little bit more. When I add in more detail after my supporting idea, it doesn't just have to be in one line, right? The, the template is not that strict. I just wanted to also say that, you know, Tuvalu is just one example, but there are other places, right? Other Others is other people in different places in the world. Some, some people, unfortunately, because of rising sea levels, they have to move, right? So they're being flooded. So I'm going to move on to main body paragraph two. Um, we can see it starts here, or it should start here with the with the volunteers essay. So from here, so humans have to stop global warming to make the sea level stop rising. So I guess the um, candidate is trying to write a topic sentence to signal um, that he or she is going to talk about their solutions, right? Um, I think I can rewrite this topic sentence. Um, but we can see the idea that we need to use, or this candidate thinks we need to use less cars. Fewer cars is probably the best way of saying that. This is where I'm actually going to add in, right? So this essay is too short. It was only around 180 words, which is too short because it's lacking um, ideas basically, right? So I'm gonna add in an idea here. So I'm actually, I'll imagine this is my line space, right? So I'll put this in blue just so as an example, right? So it's very important. I think um, on your question, on your answer paper for writing task two, leave a line to show clearly that you're starting a new paragraph. So here is my new paragraph. And I have a simple topic sentence. I think sea walls is a, is a compound noun. So I'm just going to put it as a compound noun. That means two nouns joined together to make one. Basketball, basketball, right? So very simple topic sentence. But as always, it links back to my main points in my introduction, right? So I've already previewed um, this in my introduction. Now I'm going to talk about it in the main body. Um, one solution could be to build, to build seawalls. Again, referencing, right? So these seawalls, these. Now, some of you may be watching at home and thinking, I don't know a lot about this topic, right? So that is the challenge of IELTS. You're often, sometimes you're going to get topics in the writing test or in the reading or listening that you're not familiar with. I'm not an expert on how to, um, on, you know, how to solve this problem. Um, and to be honest, I kind of just put this in, right? So um, these have been used throughout history. That's a little bit of a guess on my on my behalf, but I think they have been, right? So um, I don't think you're gonna get marked down if the content is, is wrong factually, um, as long as it's reasonable, right? So 
I don't think the examiner is going to check a history book and find out if seawalls have been used throughout history. Um, it's a reasonable thing to say. So that's why I said it. Um, these have been used throughout history and could be effective in certain places, right? So there's my supporting idea that they've been used throughout history and they could still be effective now. Now, I'm gonna erase this and continue this main body paragraph from the top again. I just hope that Tom, who's watching and dictating this or writing it down as a fast typer, but I think he's had enough time. Um, so where was I? So now, however, so what I'm saying here is, you could build seawalls, right? That was my um, that was my topic sentence. So when I say could, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to work. And here, my next supporting idea is that they are expensive. They come at great cost. And two ideas here, and will take some time. To construct, right? So again, I'm always paraphrasing. I used the word build before, now I'm using the word construct. So really what the supporting idea is here is it's the limitations, right? So I've said my I, my main point, one possible solution is you could build Z walls, but I'm saying there are limitations to them, right? So I'm going to give a little bit more um, detail here, so That's an R. I know my R's look like these sometimes, so I'll rewrite that. So here is another expression um, which I which I knew about, right? So storm surges, this means when you have a storm it increases the height of the ocean, right? So the waves become bigger. Um, so really what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit more detail, but however, it shows that there's, there's a contrast, right? So good thing about seawalls, well, in the past, they've been effective. Maybe they'll be okay now, maybe they'll help now. But then what I do is I say, but, right? So they are expensive and they take time to construct. And then I'm getting some more detail about the limitations, right? So the engineers have to think about um, how much the sea levels are gonna rise. Um, and if there's a big storm, how much even further the sea level will rise. So again, I'm connecting it to this idea about rising sea levels in the details here, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the ideas from the volunteers essay. This was too short, so what I've done is I've put in a whole extra main body paragraph, one possible solution being seawalls, right? So, and by talking about seawalls, it connects it more to the main idea, the main problem that we're addressing, rising sea levels, right? So, but I'm gonna talk about this main body paragraph in a second. We'll start again from the top. Actually, now we'll be consistent. So just imagine there's a line space here. I'll show you my topic sentence. That should fit. 
Okay, so this is the third main body paragraph. Now I wrote this quite quickly and I was having difficulty thinking of other words to mean permanent. Um, previously I've used permanently, right? Permanently, which, which is the adverb. At least I'm using a different part of speech, right? So permanent is the adjective. So this happens to me sometimes too when I'm writing, I have a little mind block. So I couldn't think of another way of saying permanent. But then I realized the previous use was an adverb, so at least I'm using some grammar, some different parts of speech. So I'm going to say one permanent answer is to reduce carbon emissions. Now, I'm going to erase this but I don't want to erase the start of my sentence, right? So so just remember, actually I'll write it in, in red. Main body, main body three, and we'll put main body three continued, just so, um, Right, just so you're not confused if you joined late. Right, so this is the start of my paragraph and I'm continuing it um, from here. So a more permanent answer. So again, just another way of um, paraphrasing. Instead of saying solution, I'm saying answer. A more permanent answer is to reduce carbon emissions, right? So I think this is what the candidate's trying to talk about, right? So. The candidate's idea for solving the problem of rising sea levels is to stop global warming. And he or she is focusing on using fewer cars, right? So now my guess is that um, the candidate doesn't know this expression. So I'm adding this in, right? That's really what I think the candidate's trying to talk about. So, but I'm gonna add in a complex sentence, right? So which, are again i could say climate change but in my essay i'm not going to use this the expression global warming nine times like it was used here so i think it's okay if i just use it again once um, Now, the reason I'm adding in this next part, like I'm making a compound sentence with and, is because I always want to connect everything back to my introduction, right? So my, in my introduction, I identified that the problem is the rise in sea levels. So I just keep repeating that problem so that the examiner knows that I'm not going off topic. Global warming is not the problem. What's happening here is we're saying that if we reduce global warming, it is a solution, right? So if temperatures go down, that means all of the ice which is melting, hopefully that'll melt at a slower rate or it'll stop melting. Um, maybe more ice will be formed, which would be great. But anyway, the result then will be that the sea levels will stop rising, right? So I think it's okay what this um, candidate is doing in trying to say that if you stop global warming, that is a solution. So I'm just using this person's ideas. I'm gonna continue, but I'll raise this part so it's not confusing. So just so you know that it was what it says here that was continuing. So I'm, now I'm gonna put in my first supporting idea. 
right? So the first way, this is a cohesive device, right? So how can we um, reduce global warming? Well, and of course, reducing global warming reduces the rising sea levels. Well, this is a cohesive device. The first way, right? So making it really easy to read for the examiner. The first way that, right? So I'm just highlighting these complex sentences. So all I've done is I've just taken a very simple word like cars, right? So the candidate has talked about um, using fewer or less cars. So I've just tried, because vocabulary was a big problem, um, I'm just trying to show how I could make the vocabulary better. So the first way that this can be done is to ban most carbon-based, right? So it means that we use fuel in our cars, that's carbon. Instead of using cars, I'm just using a word that I'm sure you know, transportation. Why just talk about cars when this is a much nicer expression to use? Um, so I'm gonna add some more detail. In most cases, that says alternatives. And again, I'm not going to use the word cars, right? Cars is a very simple word. Vehicles is much nicer. Um, less frequently used. That's always a good rule of thumb. Go for the word which is less frequently used. Um, now, here's another complex sentence. Petrol is a very British expression. In America, they might say gas. But again, um, I'm paraphrasing, carbon-based, petrol, right? So second, so here comes my next supporting idea. Very simple use of cohesive devices, but it's just making it easy for the examiner to read, and we're asked to use cohesive devices. So second, now I'm gonna move over, or turn over the page. So now the next point um, that this candidate makes about as to how to reduce global warming is electricity. So power, right? So this is good. There's some good ideas here. I'm just going to change, change the way that these ideas are presented. This is one word with a hyphen, right? So coal-fired power plants. Right, so really we're not talking about electricity, we're talking about the power plants which create the carbon emissions, right? So they're called, usually they're coal-fired, right? So here in New Zealand, most of our energy is renewable. We have a lot of wind. Um, we have a lot of um, thermal energy from underground, um, hydro energy dams. But still in a lot of countries, they're using um, coal they burn coal to make electricity. So again, it's highly unlikely that the um, candidate knew this expression. So I'm just teaching you a better one. So second coal-fired power plants should be phased out, right? So it means you slowly close them, right? So that they're all gone. You don't just suddenly turn off the power and replaced. Actually, I'll go back to the top so it's easier to read. So I'm just going to erase part of this um, from second, right? So
just so you can see one chunk of this paragraph, I just want you to see all of my second idea, right? So second, coal-fired power, pl coal power plants should be phased out and replaced with, you could also say by, with renewable. Again, this is what I'm sure um, this candidate was trying to say or trying to explain when he or she was talking about wind farms, right? So renewable means that you can keep using it again and again. So renewable energy sources And here are some examples, such as, right? So I'm not going to use a new sentence for examples. I'm going to show my examples in the sentence highlighted with such as. So again, this candidate's only given one example of wind farms. I'm using my general knowledge and I came up with solar from the sun, wind, and tidal power. Right, so when the tide comes in and out, you can use that to generate electricity. Right, so there is my third main body paragraph. Um, and this is where, even though there are some good ideas here, I think a lot of it is quite repetitive. And it's just hard to, hard to read because it's not clearly um, signaled, right? So we do have some nice um, cohesive devices, but in my opinion, is is the type of case of device that I would expect to see in the introduction or in the conclusion. Talking about the conclusion. So hopefully you can see that the conclusion is this. Again, I'm not a fan of that expression when given a conclusion, just say to conclude or in conclusion. That makes it really clear that it's the conclusion. That may be why the site um, has given the feedback that the conclusion is not clear. Um, just something simple, as simple as saying in conclusion or to conclude. All right, so I'm going to write up my conclusion. And if you've seen previous webinars or the videos I've made for the site, you might recognize this method. Um, I'm gonna say to conclude, just teach you, and I think I usually say in conclusion, this time I'm saying to conclude. Humanity, all right, so previously I talked about mankind, another expression, humanity. Um, the threat to humanity from rising sea levels. Right, so yes, rising sea levels is a key term which is used often, but you've seen me during my essay change that phrase, right? So ever increasing sea levels, the rise in the ocean, right? So, so here I'm just going back to my cycle from rising sea levels um, cannot be Right, so I'm paraphrasing from the introduction where I'm saying, yeah, this is a big problem, right? So, whoops. Just to make it easier to understand, so, I'm not quite paraphrasing this, but this is where I'm getting that information from, right? So global warming is one of the biggest threats, right? So to conclude, the threat to humanity from rising sea levels cannot be understated, right? So I'm just wrapping it all up again. Right, so here's the problem, right? So rising sea levels. Now, this is what I think you'll recommend, uh, you'll recognize, sorry. If I were, now, in previous 
um, webinars, somebody has spoken about the difference between I was or I were. Both of them are fine, so just uh, for a change on saying if I were. If I were the government, And here, I'm just linking back to my main bodies and the introduction, but I'm doing it in a different way with a complex sentence and I'm imagining I'm the government. Um, if, I would, um, if I were the government, I would build seawalls. The last time we used construct, so now we can go back to build. Right, so my second solution was like the um, solution given by our candidate was to comp, you know reduce global warming. So because I'm imagining I'm the government um, in my main body, I talked about how um, you know I could change I could change transportation. I could use different kinds of energy energy sources. Um, just to put that into conclusion. One way that that could be made formal or formalized by the government is I could do that along with other countries, right? So yes, I'm only one country, but if I made a pact, an alliance, like the Kyoto Protocol um, or the Paris Agreement, and if all the other countries also agreed to use cleaner energy, whether it be for transportation or to make electricity, then hopefully global warming would reduce and then our sea levels would go down. So I think what I've done there is I've concluded that just wrapped up the whole essay well. We're going to find out. So this is where my fingers are crossed. Um, and we have Tom who is going to input. Hopefully he's been able to keep up and he's typed everything. Um, he's going to input my essay that I've rewritten. Um, and he's going to input that into the grade system. Fingers crossed that it's an 8.5 to 9. So I'm just waiting to see what the result is. <clears throat> so, yeah, I believe um, now the camera is going to go from me and we'll see on screen. Your, at your end, you should be able to see the grade site. <clears throat> 